If you weren't aboard the Illinois Express, now's the time to jump on board, baby. No better time to subscribe to the channel than right now. Big 10 videos every single day. Always crush that like button. So the big question mark coming into this game for Illinois was the health of guys like Tommy DeVito and Isaiah Williams. And man, let's first to talk about Tommy DeVito. If there was any concern about his ankle injury, out the window, baby, because man, this guy is efficient and we need to start talking about him in the upper half, in the maybe the upper echelon of Big Ten quarterback. This guy is efficient. He doesn't turn the football over and he gets better each and every single week. And it helps when you got a guy like Chase Brown behind you. Let's talk about Chase Brown for a minute. Chase Brown makes this Illinois offense better in so many different ways. Of course, running the football straight ahead, he may be. And I think this game and this big matchup of running backs with Mo Ibrahim on the other side, I think to me he separated himself with Blake Corum as one and two right now in the Big Ten in terms of running back talent. Mo Ibrahim, still a good running back, but right now he doesn't have a whole lot of supporting cast. We'll get to back to that in just a minute. But when you can run the ball, man, that frees up so many things in the passing game. And I think that's why this Illinois passing offense has had the success that it's had because, man, when you run chase three, four times in a row, everybody's got to creep up to stop the nation's statistically best running back. And now you get to go over the top. And they've got good wide receivers. They've got good talent in the passing game. Pat Bryant, uh, Isaiah Williams, Brian Hightower, Casey Washington. You even look at a guy like Luke Ford at tight end that occasionally gets in on the mix. All together, you put it all together, and this is a good Illinois offense. Let's talk about the back-breaking stat, the thing that maybe swayed the game in favor of the Illini. I want to talk about the quattro call. Fourth down conversions. The quattro call is a relationship that Brett Bielema, head coach, and Barry Lunny Jr., the offensive coordinator, have. Um, you know, when they start a drive or they start a series, they say, hey, let's do a quattro call. You can go for it on fourth down. And I think it's that preparation, looking ahead, that allows Barry Lunny Jr. to call a better play on fourth down. A lot of times, offensive coordinators, coaches, They'll call an offense. They'll call a play looking to convert on third down, and if they don't get that, they're going to punt it away on fourth down. But a lot of times now with this quattro call between Brett Bielema and Barry Lunny Jr., you have the ability to prepare to plan ahead. You have third down, maybe you run the ball, get into a shorter yardage fourth down situation, and now in two plays, say on a third and six, get it to a fourth and two, make it easy on, easier on yourselves uh, because, man, that was such a big momentum shift because I believe three scores came off fourth down conversions uh, for the Illinois Fighting Illini. They am those fourth down dogs because, man, they can get it done on fourth down better than maybe any team in the Big Ten Conference here right now. So you got to start taking Illinois serious light right now. If you didn't in the past, how they crushed Wisconsin and now came out and the way they beat Illinois, what that defense is doing, right? I thought they played better than maybe I anticipated what would happen with Mo Ibrahim running the ball. Mo Ibrahim got a big run and he had a solid day, but he didn't really have a good to great day that Mo Ibrahim really can do. Illinois did a great job up front. Look, Illinois got studs in the line, the linebackers, the secondary. They got players all over this defense, okay? And I'm really excited to see how they continue to build off that on defense. Fantastic defense. On offense, they continue to get better. Tommy DeVito impresses me every time he takes the field. He's improved every single time he's gone out there. Those receivers are getting open. They're throwing the ball further down the field. I think earlier in the season, short to mid-range passing game was their MO when they put the ball in the air. Now they can stretch the field. Now they can get open. It'll open up the run game just that much more. Illinois is the real deal. Right now, I'm looking at Illinois and maybe Purdue right now as the best two teams, and they're going to be able to battle it out um, on the field later on uh, to see which one of those teams just is the best team in the Big Ten West. But, man, they are the complete package. They play Brett Bielema physical Big Ten football. Let's talk about Minnesota. Okay, coming into this game, a healthy Mo Ibrahim, I thought, okay, this is the chance for the Gophers to really respond. They were the flavor of the week 
right after beating Michigan State the way they did. I'll get back to that in just a minute. They were the flavor of the week. They came, they fell down to Purdue, right? And now they now with Mo Ibrahim back, they had the great opportunity to come out and really prove, yeah, we were more than just the flavor of the week. We are here to stay. Didn't happen. Okay, Mo Ibrahim had a solid day um, running the football. But what is this offense outside of Mo Ibrahim? Right, if Mo Ibrahim, one, is injured or doesn't have an outstanding day and doesn't run for, what, 200 yards? What can this offense do? I think maybe the injury of Chris Ottman Bell has hurt this team maybe more than people anticipated. Right, you don't have that number one target at wide receiver. You got a lot of guys. Right, I think a lot of people were maybe expecting Dalen Wright to step up in the role that Chris Ottman Bell had. I don't think he's gotten to that point yet. And then you got a lot of guys. You know, you just got a lot of Mike Brown, Stevens, uh, Brevin Span, Ford. They're solid players, but I don't think they're guys that are continuously going to make big plays in the passing game. And until this passing game can get better, this is going to be, I hate to say it, maybe a one-dimensional offense with Mo Ibrahim. I, th- I think that's the way it's trending. I'm not going to say that's totally what's happening or that's totally what's going to happen with Minnesota, but that appears to be the way it's trending right now. And look, the defense played a solid game today. And the defense is still a good defense, but man, this team is predicated on what Mo Ibrahim does. It's so focused right now on one player. And now who knows what the health of the future is after that fist to the helmet of Tanner Morgan and what, you know, is Ethan Calic Manis going to be the guy um, going forward at quarterback? There's a lot of questions to be answered. Um, I think that victory, the, what they did against Michigan State, was more about where Michigan State is than Minnesota. I think Michigan State is having some big-time issues um, over there. Maybe they'll get it figured out here down the stretch. And I think Minnesota just capitalized on those opportunities. We're seeing just how low Michigan State has dropped so far this season, and Minnesota just capitalized on that. I don't think, and I think a lot of people don't think, that that's not a big-time win. Minnesota still lacking that big-time win after that early, easy, non-conference schedule. What do you think of this win for the Illini? Man, they are good. They are fun to watch. They are Big Ten football at its finest. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Make sure you subscribe to Big Ten Ted. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one.